day my life was filled with rain Sunny You smiled at me and really eased the pain The dark days are gone and the bright days are here My sunny one shines so sincere Sunny one so true I love you Thank you for the sunshine bouquet Sonny Thank you for the love you bought my way You gave to me your all in all And now I feel about ten feet tall Sonny one so true I love you Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Sunny by Bobby Hebb, covered by loads and loads of great artists over the years. I'm going to show you a kind of a slightly simplified beginner version and a few cheats to get around a couple of awkward chords in it. The original version goes up by semitones. It kind of changes key during the song. If you want to do that version, you're going to need your bar chords. I will show you that as well. But this is a great song for beginners as well that want to experiment with a few slightly more advanced chords. So let's get to a close up and check it out. So let's start with the verse here. So the chords are E minor, sunny to G. Yesterday my sea was filled with. Now this is the fun part. The proper chords would be F sharp minor, a bar chord to a B7. But there's a really, really nice cheat we can do here, which is this F sharp minor 11 is the name of the chord pretty fancy one it's not hard to do second finger second fret of the thicker string that finger will also mute the fifth string probably whether you wanted to or not then third and fourth fingers going down in the second fret in the middle two strings so we end up with second fret muted second fret second fret open open lovely chord you can often substitute an f sharp minor if you encounter an F sharp minor and you don't know how to play it, you can often substitute this chord. I think it sounds great. And then you could either play a regular B7, if you know a regular B7, or you could, I think it sounds kind of sweet just to leave off little finger there. Okay, I guess it's not really a B7 anymore. Uh, it would be a B add, I'm just trying to think now what it is. It's uh, adding the fourth, so it would be a B11. Uh, but it just sounds cool. You don't really have to worry about what the, the chords are called. So it's a nice change. F sharp minor 11 to B11. But just think of it as a, a cheat for going F sharp minor to B7. Okay, so that again, that section. So E minor to G. Yesterday my C was filled with F sharp minor 11 to B7. It's obviously only half a bar each on those two tricky chords. And again, E minor, G. You smiled at me and C chord is the F sharp minor 11 to B7. The E minor's here to the G is gone. C chord now to F chord. F sharp minor 11 to B7. So E minor for two bars and there's a little fill there. So this uh, second section, E minor for one bar, G for one bar, C for one bar, and now it's an F. I nearly always play F like this with my thumb over the top. For most beginners that would be a complete nightmare. So you could either do a full bar chord F or if that's a struggle, you could just play a little F major seven would kind of work. I feel like the best easy one would be this like a proper like mini F, maybe with a C bass. So in this sort of situation where you encounter an F, you do the one that you are capable of doing is the, is the one that you're targeting here. I'm gonna give you this as being my suggested one or a full bar chord F if you can. I think it does sound better in this particular song, but if you wanna play the tune, you can't handle it, then use one of the many F cheats. If you're not sure about the, all the F cheats, go and check out the beginner course on my website. I go through all of the different options for you there uh, by what ones are hardest and gradually making it easier and easier till you can find one that you can do. Anyway, so that B section again, E minor's gone and the G chord are here 
C chord is gone, then it's F chord, then F sharp minor 11, now for a whole bar. Sunny, one so B7, I love you. Then we end up with this little kind of the James Bond chord sequence, I guess you might hear it as. It's an E minor chord, and then you put your first finger down in the first fret of the second string, makes it an E minor with a sharp five. Then little finger goes down the uh, second fret of the second string. This makes it an E minor six, and then back again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then you're back into another verse, and you have to try not to go. can. Uh, anyway, let me take you through that whole sequence again one more time. So, two, three, four, sunny E minor, two G. Yesterday my C was filled with F sharp minor to B7, E minor, it's that same sequence again, to G. Smiled at me and C chord eased F sharp minor to B7, the E minor's gone and the G days are here. C chord one shines F sincere. F sharp minor one so B7 or B11. I love E minor. With F the sharp five to the sixth thing here. I think it only does that little uh, James Bond sequence once there in between each verse. I sometimes play it twice. It doesn't really matter. Uh, if you're struggling to remember the lyrics or whatever, doing it twice can be pretty helpful. Uh, just don't do that in a band if they all think that you're going to the next section straight away. So that would be the first thing. Just get through the chords with a super simple strumming. You don't need to do anything particularly complicated with this one, I would, I would suggest. Uh, as far as the strumming goes... Okay, so just where it's got two chords per bar, you want to be just thinking down, 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 because the original, down, down, up, up, down, you'd have to push, you'd have to play that B7 a little early, and I feel like that just doesn't sound as good. So, uh, down, up, up, down. Also feeling that just doing the um, having an accent on two and four and playing even eighth notes works pretty good as well. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So I'm just doing literally doing this. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So play eighth notes with an accent on two and four. Generally, it's going to sound good. I said, Sonny, yesterday my life was filled. So there's lots of available options here. Obviously, the original recording is a lot sparser than that. It's mostly the bass doing that. Doing a very, very distinct kind of a bass line. I think the guitars are doing chips here. So uh, chips will be using little triad grips on two and four. Any more advanced guitar players out there or beginners getting starting to explore their triads might want to check that out. Doing, you know, an E minor to G. To C, F sharp minor, B7, E minor. It's that kind of thing all of the way through. I can't remember exactly what the chips are, but it's chips on two and four with the bass doing that line. 
works real nice. Now, the key thing, now we're about to get a little bit more advanced and talk about what happens with bar chords. So one of the kind of key things, the most notable things about this song is that it goes through that verse as I've showed to you a couple of times, and then it very drastically changes key by one semitone. So all of the chords that you've just learned have to be played up one semitone. Now, uh, if you had a friend that wanted to do some sort of clever party trick, you might be able to pop them capo on the first fret and play the same thing. But most times it's going to involve changing all of those chords to bar chords. Okay, so let me just take you through what that sequence is, because once you learn it in one position, it is literally moving the same thing further up and up the fretboard as you go along. So moving everything up one, you'd end up with F minor, A flat, D flat, G minor to C7. That sequence would repeat again. F minor to A flat. D flat. G minor to C7. And E minor's gone to A flat. To D flat. To G flat. F minor to C7. I love That's a little bit awkward, I've got to say. So I'm using my second finger there on the second fret and then trying to angle it up to the third fret underneath those other fingers. That's just it's the only way I could kind of get my wrap my fingers around it. But it wouldn't really matter if you did it or you didn't do it. But the, that thing, this key changing thing, it plays through that verse exactly as I just showed you then. Then it moves it up another fret and then up another fret. So it's got this gradually getting higher and higher. Obviously, it becomes a little bit more vocally challenging as well when you're starting to move things like that. But it's a, you know, a good fun thing to do. Also, a good challenge for anyone getting into their triads because you're going to then have to move all your triad shapes up a little bit. So it's good to make sure you're, you're hip with where all your root notes are and you're able to move that around. So uh, I think it's a really cool song for what you know to grow up you can learn it as a complete beginner and use the little cheat there for the f sharp minor and uh, b7 and then as you get a little bit better you might start exploring the chips thing you might explore playing the bass line part you might explore it using bar chords loads of ways to grow this tune especially if you've got somebody else to jam it out with really fun it's just a beautiful song as well so uh yeah really hope you enjoyed this remember there's loads and loads of songs beginning songs all graded out nicely for you so you can find songs at your level over on the website and in the app so do check that out as well if you haven't seen it already, there'll be links down in the description. Have yourselves an absolutely fantastic day, and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Bye-bye.